Hey, how's it going everybody? So I want to do a video talking about Gemstone Legends and comparing it to the obvious point of comparison, Empires and Puzzles, which is the game that I started um, with this channel and is still a primary focus of mine on this channel, but I'm enjoying this game a lot too, and so I want to focus on some of the things that I think Gemstone Legends does better than Empires and Puzzles. Um, this is going to be 10 things. They're in no particular order because it's really hard to rank these things as, you know, most or least important, but they're all 10 things that I think are quite significant, quite different, and better in my opinion. So make sure you stick around and catch the full list. Um, there's also timestamps available in the description here, but let's get into it. One thing I want to mention real quick is that the people at Gemstone Legends were nice enough to give my viewers a redemption code to give you 50 free summons. So in the description down below, you'll find a link to download as well as a promo code. So what you want to do is click the link if you want to download and try out the game and get your free summons. Um, you'll have to complete the tutorial first and then within three hours of downloading the game, you want to enter that code hashtag Spock hashtag in the... Um, what's it called, in the global chat towards the bottom of the screen, and then you'll get your free summons sent to your inbox, which is in the upper left. One other thing is, depending on how much uh, roster space you have, if you summon heroes and your roster is full, they also go to that inbox up there. So if you don't see them, don't worry, they're just in that inbox waiting for you to claim them once you have a little bit of space for them. So number one on this list is one of the coolest and sort of most refreshing things when compared to Empires and Puzzles, and that is that all Ascension items are the same for all heroes, and you can also use other heroes to ascend your heroes. So we've all been in that situation where you're waiting for just, you know, a couple darts or one tonic, and you have plenty of Damascus blades, and, um, you know, maybe it's waiting for shields or for trap tools or something, but having so many different ascension items and, you know, the RNG that we know and love in this game, it can take a long time to get the stuff that you actually need, and that can be extremely frustrating. And that's one thing that I think Gemstone Legends does better, which is that all ascension items are the same. So you have these cauldrons, and they are based on the star rating that you are ascending from. So if you want to ascend a five-star hero to six stars, you just need five-star cauldrons. Um, they're still a rare item, as you would expect. Um, but you can also use heroes to ascend other heroes. So you can use five five-star heroes. That might sound expensive too, but one really cool thing is that you can ascend one-star heroes all the way up to five stars and use those to ascend the five star heroes that you actually care about. You can ascend three star heroes up to five stars. There's kind of any combination. So there's a lot of room to kind of grind your way up and do it for free. Or you can, you know, pick up an offer or something like that to get more cauldrons and do it a little bit faster. But I think it's nice that the materials are the same for all and that you can use heroes to do that as well. So number two on this list is that all heroes are available to summon at all times. So if you go into our hero section down here, click the lexicon, which is a cool feature that shows all the heroes in the game. So you can see kind of what's out there. I always wish that Empires and Puzzles would, would have done something like this. At this point, there's no reason for them to because there have been companion apps and websites and the forum and all these things created to house that information. But it's convenient that it's right here in the game. Um, but the other cool part is that if you go to summon, you don't have to wait, you know, four months for a certain event or once a year, like you do in Empires and Puzzles, for these certain heroes to come back. They are always available. Um, the one potential downside that you might be thinking is, okay, that's that many more heroes in the portal. It's that much more unlikely to get a particular hero that I want. Uh, two things. One, they still do featured heroes, so there still are times where you have a greater chance to pull certain heroes. Um, the other thing is that we all know that Empires and Puzzles is sort of a crapshoot anyways, and there's people that spend thousands of dollars in portals where you have better chances to get these certain event heroes, and they still don't get them. So I think it's, Empires and Puzzles only gives the illusion of there being sort of a higher chance. Um, you know, in reality, it just kind of goes the way it goes. But it is nice that 
all the heroes are available at all times, in my opinion, and you can summon any one of them through the altar function that you can see in the bar down below. So number three on this list is that you get to make three moves per turn. So if you look at the upper left hand corner of the board here, you can see the number three, which is telling you that you have three moves left to make for this turn. But it gives you the possibility of doing some cooler stuff, creating some larger combinations. You know, we can go for all the tiles connected in one shape here, which creates um, one of these numbered tiles, which increases the combo on a uh, following turn. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of a, a new take on this that I didn't sort of imagine, but um, I think is really fun. Four is related to number three, um, and this, these next few are going to focus on um, the board itself and the actual gameplay, but it's the fact that you can make diagonal matches. And this was sort of weird to get used to after playing Empires and Puzzles, but it allows you so much more freedom on the board. So for example, this purple, we can move diagonally in line with those purples. Um, so it just gives you a lot more flexibility. And so I think this game is not that you need to be this way, but there's a lot of room for people who are very strategic about the way they play the board. Um, so there's a lot of cool opportunities for how to set up interesting combos and like we can connect this down. So another diagonal match, um, and then can drag this down and, you know, depending on what team we're using, that could give us a ton of mana and really powerful combinations. So number five is something that I think is really cool, which is that you share the board with your opponent. So for me, this was really refreshing after Empires and Puzzles because the way that defense works can be frustrating sometimes where they gain mana no matter what's going on. So you get a bad board, but they still operate the same way. So this puts everyone in sort of the same boat. And I don't totally know the extent of this yet because I'm still learning a lot of things about the game, but I think you can use this to your advantage. So if you're playing against certain colors, um, you can potentially match tiles that they would need to charge up faster. And so you can sort of play offensively and defensively at the same time, which as someone who is very strategic like myself, that's, that's something that I thought was really exciting. So you'll see after I make my matches here, it's going to be their turn, which you can see in the turn bar at the top, and they have to play the exact same board. And so if they get a great combo, I can also capitalize on that because, um, I get to use the same tiles that they've created. So you can see these numbered blocks, which um, are these numbered tiles, which increase the damage for combos. Um, but yeah, this is true whether you're in map stages or raids, and it's something that I think is pretty awesome. Okay, so number six is that the auto farming is way better than Empires and Puzzles. I've always felt a little frustrated by the slow speed of farming in that game. And during some of the events where you're wanting to farm a lot, when the energy costs are reduced, it can be quite time consuming. So this has an auto farm button similar to Empires and Puzzles. Um, even at the times one speed, it looks a little bit faster. And when you have multiple specials at the same time in Empires and Puzzles, they're often waiting like until the full special is done before the next one starts. And this one seems to be a little bit more efficient there but it's quick and then there's also a times two speed where things get moving much faster. So it's great that you can really kind of burn through these levels as you're farming and they seem to be a little bit more respectful of your time there, which I definitely appreciate. One other thing I wanna to add to the uh, better auto farming thing is that every day you get these uh, 15 multi-battle things and it will just string together 15 attempts on the same stage in a row. You can set it up to like auto sell artifacts that you get, auto refill your energy if you need to, continue even if you lose. There's like all kinds of stuff that you can do. Auto swap heroes when they reach their max level. Um, and sort of like VIP pass on Empires and Puzzles, they have something called Gemstone Prime, I think it's called. And that gives you, I can't remember exactly, it's either 
50 total um, auto battles per day or an additional 50 for 65. I'm not exactly sure, but um, this is really cool. You can set how many you want it to do. You just press fight and away you go. And it, it goes at a pretty quick speed and can just burn through a bunch of levels, level up your heroes, and uh, you don't have to do a thing. So number seven is that you gain XP for your heroes, not just for your main player account, but for your heroes as you play. So the, the feeding mechanic in this game, which we'll talk about more in, an, in a future video, is different than Empires and Puzzles. I'm still sort of wrapping my head around it, but you're not farming for as many materials. So this, you just play the game and your heroes get better. You don't have to just farm in the background so you can generate feeders or get all these other camps running in the background. So we'll let this finish out on autoplay, which we just talked about, and I'll show you that um, you gain XP for the heroes in battle. So you can, you can farm, and you can just put new heroes in and use farming as a way to level up your heroes. Um, you have more options, and, and I like that just sort of... It's not really a passive XP gain, but I like that just playing the game makes your team better. So you can see at the bottom the XP gained. One of the heroes I'm using already is at max level, but the other heroes all gained XP, and you can see one of them even went up a level. So uh, that's another really cool thing. So number eight that we'll look at while we're still in the map here is that gems can still deal damage even if you don't have them on your team. So I know we use the term tiles a lot in Empires and Puzzles referring to the, you know, tiles on the board. Um, in this game, it seems that they are referred to as gems, I'm guessing, from the Gemstone Legends aspect. Um, but the cool part is if you look at my heroes down below, you're not looking at the... Um, yeah, I guess you're looking at the color of their health bar or the background. So you can see I have three blues, one purple, and one red. So if I match yellows, greens, and we'll just... You can also move tiles. Um, this is a bonus tip. You can also move tiles that are not even being matched. So if you want to position them somewhere else for another turn or set up a, f a following combo that you want to happen after the tiles settle out. Um, but you can see we still do damage there. We don't have any of these colored heroes on our team and we still get to deal damage from them, which is pretty cool. So um, let's just make a couple moves that won't make any matches and you can see, boom, greens are still dealing damage. So that's really nice. You don't have to have a situation where you're just hitting for one because you don't have the right team. And this opens up a lot of possibilities for what is the best way to construct your team. And these are things that I'm gonna be looking at in future videos as I get more in, uh, in depth with the strategy and as I learn and understand and test some of these things out for myself even more. Okay, so tip number nine might be my favorite of all of these. And this is something that's totally different if you've played Empires and, Empires and Puzzles for a while. Any hero can be ascended to six stars. So imagine if you could level up Shrub Air, for example, to you know five stars in Empires and Puzzles or six stars in this game. It doesn't matter where the hero is starting. As long as you have the ascension materials, you can push them up to wherever you want them to go. So legendary heroes will still, the ones that start at five stars, will still have higher base stats and you know better, uh, better special skills and things like that. But there are a lot of people in the top of the leaderboards that use three-star heroes that are all the way ascended. So if we go to the arena and we go to ranking and we look at some of these top teams, um, you can tell the rarity by the border on the hero. So you can see this first one here is a legendary hero and she has a gold border around her. This one here is an epic and has this purple or pink border. And then these two right here are rare, you know, basically started out as three star heroes and they are um, leveled up to six stars and are currently on the number one ranked team. So there are a few of these. So if we look at this hero, Ultan and Prodan, I guess is how you'd pronounce that. Um, here's another three-star hero, Elias. So if I go to my own hero um, roster, 
I have some of these same heroes. So here's Ultan. I've leveled him up to four stars, and uh, you can see his level. He's getting close, and then I could ascend him to five stars. So it's really cool that um, you have this flexibility to take heroes that you like and ascend them all the way if you want to. So you don't need legendary heroes to be competitive. You can have any heroes. It doesn't really make sense to do this with one and two star heroes because their skills are proportionally weaker. But as you've seen, there are some standout three star heroes that are not hard to get and you can be at the number one spot on the leaderboard with those. So this is something that I think is, is really cool. And like I mentioned before in the earlier tip, you can use other heroes in your roster. Like you can level up some of these two star heroes into three stars and use those to ascend your three star heroes. You can level, you know, so you can, you can kind of fatten up your feeders and use those for ascensions. And, um, you know, it just takes time, but you can do that all for free. So there's a total uh, feasible free to play angle and you can be quite competitive with heroes that aren't that hard to get, which is really cool. That's where the strategy around synergy and team composition really comes in. And that's definitely going to be a focus of a future video of mine. All right, the final tip, tip number 10, is that they're very generous with the world energy in this game. Uh, they just call it energy. Um, but you can see, and it, it can overfill. So my capacity is 36, and I have 1,928 energy. So I've picked up a lot of stuff from events and rewards. You can see if you play... Um, 90 minutes collectively throughout the day, you get 120 more. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can earn extra energy. And um, I guess they do this instead of flasks. But um, yeah, I feel like it, the game has been super generous. I've been playing and farming a lot, and I still have a ton of world energy. So I really like that about it as well. All right, everybody, that was my list of 10 things that I think Gemstone Legends does better than Empires and Puzzles. Um, if you want to check out this game, there is a link and a promo code in the description down below. Uh, click the link to download it. You want to enter that promo code or redemption code to get 50 free summons. Um, you have to complete the tutorial first in the game, and then you will need to enter that code within three hours. So make sure you have a little bit of time set aside to do this, but um, that's a bunch of free summons, and I think it's a fun game. I'm gonna keep playing it. We're gonna keep talking about strategy here on the channel in addition to my Empires and Puzzles content. So I'd love if you guys joined me for that as well. Um, if you've been playing this game already and you think you know some things I don't, please feel free to share those in the comments down below, both for my benefit and everyone else watching this video. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you wanna see more, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.